morning, daily huddlers. Um, I'm usually naturally smiling, but today my smile feels like it's cracking my face. Um, as you all pop on here and I think about the weekend that we just had together live, which was, I just still feel the momentum from it. So I thought I would start us off today, um, not with a joke, but with a quote from Alice Waters. And if you don't know who Alice Waters is, she was really kind of the pioneer um, to the farm to table movement. She was a chef. And this is what she says about gathering. She says that gathering inspires us delightfully to be more hopeful, more joyful, and more thoughtful. In a word, more alive. Roll that tape, Lizette. Mm. Ah, good morning. Good morning and welcome to Wednesdays on the Daily Huddle where we talk everything communication and relationships. And we do that because we know that more effective, more authentic communication builds better relationships and better relationships builds better families, better communities and better business. So we are here to talk about the momentum of communication this morning. Before we do that, though, I would like to start with some questions to my treasured friends. And one of the questions that we always ask is, who will you hug today? And I want to take this question to Stan, and I'll tell you why. We had an um, in-person gathering over the weekend, and Stan, we missed you. So oh. tell us, how are you, and who will you hug today? Oh, wow. I am, I am, um, I'm so, hmm. I'm just grateful. You know, that's one that I'm, I am quite often is gr grateful. And I'm going to hug my my wife today and our guests, two people, our guests, my special guests for our program tonight on The Open Mind. And I miss you guys, too. Oh, that's fantastic. I hope I'll get to hug you in real life one of these days. Oh, me too. Um, we will. Well, I will tell you somebody who gives the very best hugs in real life. <laughs> that is my dear friend, Andrea. Andrea. Good morning, Andrea. Tell me, where are you and how are you this morning? I am right where I need to be, which is right here. And today I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. Inspired. Thank you for sharing. Yes. That. Yeah, we have just one last question to make sure that we're all here and nowhere else together. And I'm going to give that question to Catherine before she kicks us off. Catherine, do tell us, what time is it? Here are the time is now. It is right now, the only time really that ever is. Absolutely, the only time that matters. So with that, tell us a little bit about our question today and um, yeah, take us in the, on a path. Yes, well, question we have today is how do you keep the power of momentum alive? And it, it was born out of this experience we had over the weekend. We had our daily huddle in-person event. Um, it's the first one that I've been a part of. And it was magical. And, you know, I think we've all had experiences of having a wonderful, inspirational experience and like, oh, I want to keep this feeling forever. How do I keep it going? And, and then, you know, days later, it's like, it's like, what was that feeling? Where was I? How did I do that? And so we really wanted to talk about that today because that's how Tara and I felt leaving the event on Saturday was just filled up with connection and um, love and camaraderie. I mean, for all of the hosts to come together, I hadn't met most of the hosts, our hosts for the Daily Huddle in person. And then for us to come together around a collective purpose and put on an event for a day uh, that's filled with learning and uh, exercises and um, collaboration, it was just magical. So Tara and I got to talking about, well, how do we, how do we keep this alive? We want to keep it going. And I have my answer and I know Tara has an answer too, or some answers about it. And um, 
I tell you, I'll just give you one word for my answer and then I can elaborate on it. We can talk about it. But mine is focus. Because what we focus on grows. It's one of my favorite sayings. And when we focus on that, for instance, that connection that we have with other people and how to keep it alive, that we start, our brain starts to see other opportunities to do that. So the question then becomes, how do I stay focused on this being what I want? And I have some ideas on that, but I want to hear what your answer is, Tara, because it's we always have different thoughts about things like this. Yeah. Um So I think that your answer really aligns with mine. And and I think what's so much fun about our partnership and our friendship, Catherine, is where where we come from. Like I'm coming from a communication space. And I think that you're coming much more from an internal motivation space. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I think about momentum, which interestingly in my tagline, you can't really see it, but it's the center word in my tagline, which is purpose, momentum, and impact. Mm -hmm. And so momentum is actually defined in physics by mass times velocity. Well, the mass is the purpose. So when we are driven by a powerful purpose, that is one thing that fuels our momentum is to remind ourselves why, what, why we're doing what we're doing, why it matters. Um, But that's not actually my answer. Uh (laughs) Background to your answer is the context. Yeah, but the, I think really like for something like a simple takeaway, um, I go back to my acronym of GUS and I'll tell you the biology of it real quickly. The acronym of GUS stands for genuine, unique, and simple. And when we are in communication, which is how I'm thinking about momentum, um, people feel stress when we're not authentic. People can sense it and then it causes stress and it causes angst. So being genuine helps to keep momentum alive. Mm-hmm. Unique keeps dopamine firing, which keeps us alert, keeps us aware. It keeps us motivated. That is exactly what dopamine is for. So we have to not be predictable, not ask the same questions, not keep doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. We have to change our routines, change our processes. Um, And the big one with communication is the S, which stands for simplicity. And that means no matter what our message is, especially in a gathering space, if it's not simple, it won't be repeated and it will be forgotten. So that's Mm -hmm. my formula for keeping momentum alive. Be genuine, unique, and simple. I love that. Um, And I think it takes for me anyway, some really practical things. We get so distracted. There are so many distractions. If I don't wake up and start the day and really get clear. Like lately I've been journaling and, be, and and it's called scripting. Like, what do I want this day to look like? And what am I focused on? And it's amazing how throughout the day when I get a little off kilter or like yesterday, I got a phone call that my son was sick and had to go pick him up. Like that changes the whole scope of my day, you know, the plan of my day. And then I just went right back, remembered what I wrote in the morning and was like, oh, right. Today was going to be all about flow and ease. It didn't matter what I got done or didn't get done. And so it's a reminder. So I really think we have to bring all of this into our focus and keep it in the front of our mind because from the in-person gathering, we can feel if one of the things that I wanted to take away is how to be in that connection and how to feel what that feels like on an ongoing basis. And we can make up that that's because we were in person or we could make up that it was because it was just the right people at the right time or we were in the right space. Or we could say, I can have that feeling anywhere anytime. What do I need to do? What are the ingredients that put that there? So like here on the daily huddle, it was one of my intentions for today. It's like, these are amazing, beautiful people. I'm going to see them, hear them and connect with them. And that starts to fill me up in that way. So I think it's bringing it back down to the practical too, really to merge the two of like, like you said, the Gus, Mm -hmm. and then also practically, how do I do that? How do I keep that in the front forefront of my mind? So I have to, as, as usual, you and your brilliance and your wisdom and love just totally inspired me. And I'll tell you why. Um, On Saturday, we were in a room full of people that we already knew virtually, some we knew personally, but I think that the link was that we were all, we, there was like so much love in that room, so much admiration, so much authenticity that we approach the room with like these beautiful hugs, this embracing, this generous spirit, right? And the moment built as the day went by. Um, 
I mentioned to you before we came on here that I'm headed to a big networking event um, near my home today where I will know zero people. And for those who don't know, that is like your idea of health. <laughs> yes, I like individual conversations with one or two people, rich, deep conversations, small talk. Ah. So um, you know what I'm going to do today? And I'm going to report back to you, Coach Catherine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the same way I approach that daily huddle event. And I'm going to take it to this big networking event where I don't know anybody. And I'm going to tell you what happens. Mm, I love it. I love it. And it is true. We even talked about that during our um, event that when you're in, like, you can ask a really wonky, weird, you know, socially weird, wonky question, like, what's your greatest dream? What's your biggest dream? Or what is, you know, what are you most excited about coming up? Yeah, it's going to throw them a little off kilter, but that goes to your, you, the unique. What happens? And, you know, it's like they sort of, what? oh, and then they're suddenly right there in the present. They don't have their scripted answer of here's where I work and here's where I live. And here, you know, here's my pitch. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I mean, I'm dying to know what happens. Like what's the experience and how different does it feel compared to how you normally feel? So I'll be you excited. mentioned, you mentioned that um, your formula for keeping momentum alive is focus. And that is completely within my, I'm completely empowered to do that or not. So I am going to intentionally focus on the momentum that we built on Saturday. And I'm going to take it into this event that I'm headed to as soon as the daily huddle is over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. And I think it really is. Sometimes I try and skip over the small steps. I feel like Andrea could speak to this. I don't know why, but like I skip over the small steps of like, I think I've got this. I've done it so much. I've set an intention. I'm good. And then all of a sudden I'm like, why is it not working? It's like, oh, I didn't do the small steps, the beginning. You're nodding your head, Andrea. What do you have to say about that? Well, is the idea of little steps become a habit, a habit. So even though it becomes a repetition and you think, oh, I did it, it's it's done, check. If you don't consciously do them, uh, they don't feel like you're advancing in this momentum that we're talking about. So yeah, absolutely. You know, and that brings up for me is the sometimes also, I think we often forget is the celebration, the acknowledgement, the celebration, Mm -hmm. like we've done it. I did my small steps and then we go, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Mm -hmm. And it's like, so at the end of the day, it's like looking back and going, wow, I really did those small steps. And how did that change my day? Cause that gives me, um, the momentum, but the, um, motivation to do Mm -hmm. it again tomorrow. That's dope. And it's the sense, yeah, the sense of completion. That's what they said that you always should make the bed. The first thing that you do is make your bed because you already, your brain is already thinking about, okay, done, check, this feels good. What's next? So yeah. it is the little things to keep that momentum. It's like the water. Mm-hmm. You keep that momentum and yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Tara, that thank you, Andrea. I just, yeah, you just always speak so eloquently about that. And Tara, I think this too brings up for me the communication piece. Who are we sharing it with? When I do that just on my own, do my thing all day and I'm not really sharing my goals, like I can still do it, but I kind of wane. I need to be in communication and community about that with somebody else because you'll lift me up. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And then I'm like even more jazzed about it or you know, somebody might inspire me as part of my routine and then it's, oh my gosh. So I think that's so important too, that connection. We can't do this in a vacuum. You know, um, I'm so happy that you brought that up because- I mean, that that's really where we started this conversation, but I, I never, ever want to minimize the power of true, authentic connection that's in a safe space and that's enlightening. And the reason why I share that is because some of us will tell ourselves, I don't need that. I, I get, I'm an introvert. I get my energy from being alone. There's no complete, absolute introvert because that's not the way that we're biologically made. Some mm. of us, might like the big room filled with people. And some of us might prefer the more intimate conversations. Um, But either way, we need that to keep our momentum alive. Physiologically, we truly do. So I definitely want to encourage listeners to think about what type of communication actually gives you energy, because there is a type. It's not like, oh, my energy is purely from being alone. We're not made that way. We are born needing community. So to me, to to think about what you're saying is focus on what type of communication will help us to keep that momentum alive. And part of that, Catherine, is um, serotonin slash confidence. Mm -hmm. 
And when we talk to people that are honest with us and encourage us, but also are going to challenge us, that builds our confidence and that builds our energy slash momentum. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I agree. I think it's what you talk about a lot about what are the types of relationships and that do you want? What really fuels you? What fills you up? And you're talking about one-on-one deep, meaningful connection, couch time, you know, as we do and other people, it can be a really, you know, a group of friends or, you know, something like that. But what is it that really does fuel you and fill you up? And it, it's also where the accountability partner comes in. I know that's sort of the trite, uh, it's kind of been done, but it's important because I think however you use it, however you call it, you're one of mine, right? It's like to have that person to hold you accountable to your dreams, not to mm-hmm. their standards, but to what you said you want to do, because we all fall off and get distracted. And it's like, how do we get ourselves back? So for me, it's like, it's kind of like an eating plan when you're trying to eat healthier. You know, the number one thing they'll say is you've got a plan, get your stuff ready so that when you're really hungry, it's right there. So you can grab it because if you're in the moment, you're going to choose whatever your body wants. And so that's similar to this. I want to be really in connection with people, but if I get tired or under-resourced, and I don't have my structure in place for what do I do when this happens, I'm going to go to my default, which is go into myself, don't do my things, don't stay focused, and I get really thrown off. I, you know, that, that I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention something else that's a default for so many of us. And this is becoming, as we've talked about on the Daily Huddle, an epidemic. And it's that we, we feel like we need connection, but we're tired. So we open up social media. Mm. And we start connection Yeah, listen to uh, comedians or comment on things and our body is craving connection, but that actually really literally contributes to more loneliness. Yeah. We're on the outside of other people's lives. Yeah. And we just, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with social media. I'm actually trying to do more on social media (laughs) Um, because I know it's important for branding and for the book I'm going to release, but um, we can't rely on that for our momentum and our energy and our connection. Well, and I think it's doing it for the right reasons. Like you said, if you're under-resourced, don't know what to do, bored or whatever, or feeling lonely, to get on social media is not going to help you feel different. It's going to perpetuate those feelings. If you are, you know, curious, I don't, I think there's a way that you can use it. That's, you know, I do it a lot for information, you know, Mm -hmm. like, oh, I need a recommendation for something, or I'm just curious what's out there, you know, but I have to be really clear about what's my motivation and am I feeling under-resourced and using it for a way to fill me up or get my dopamine hits? And is there something more productive that I can do in that moment? Yeah. (laughs) I'm really curious what um, other people do to keep their momentum alive because this is a group of learners and growth-minded individuals. So I know that they have ideas about this. Stan, what do you do to keep your momentum alive? Well, one of the things I do um, is I, I I read a lot of, of um, the truly inspirational, motivational type of thing, just to keep my mind on that wavelength. Because um, too often we can... You know, it's, it's one thing to, to 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 know that having better thoughts is going to elevate you and put you on a different frequency, but it's it's another thing just to constantly stay in your own mind. Sometimes you've got to get out of your own mind, and you got to get thoughts from another source sometimes to help you elevate your own. And so I find that that helps me a lot. Mm, I love that you brought that. Thank you for sharing it. Um... I, I completely agree. I think that's part of the you of Tara's formula. That's unique. That's bringing new and fresh ideas. Um, and recently I realized I was watching a lot of TV, like just really trash TV. And I was on the treadmill and I would watch it on my phone in the mornings. And I thought, you know, I don't think this is a great way to start the day. If we're talking about subconscious and what's going into my brain, what I'm feeding it, I don't think this is probably what I'd want to come out the other end. So I started listening to motivational podcasts in the morning and it's, the difference is incredible. I feel, I feel much better. Um, and I think it is what we're feeding our brains. Uh, there, there's no doubt about that, Catherine. Um, I stopped watching the news in the morning. It used to be a habit. I would watch it from, no, I mean, I get up usually at five, five thirty, but from seven to seven twenty, I would watch good morning America. And I stopped doing that because I realized how it was affecting my momentum and my creativity. Like my morning is my creative time. And that was messing me up. So. <laughs> and it looks like we've got a hand raise. I think that might, is that Cece? Yes, it is. How are you guys? Um, thank you so much for the topic. 
Um, what I do in the morning is I get up and I meditate and breathe uh, for about maybe 30 minutes. Then I do uh, have a prayer. I pray with other people as well as myself. And I read the Bible every day. And I try to memorize scriptures. And then how I get out with other people, I start sharing my testimonies and we start just making fun of the situations that I've got myself in. So I'm thinking myself with uh, meditating on good things and speaking to other people, uh, even unknown people, you know, while we're waiting in line, we're going to, I come up with something funny to say, even if I just laugh like we did yesterday, I don't know, whatever day we did, we did a laugh. And so I just start laughing and other people are laughing with us now. So um, that's just part. And I read a book every month and I, I journal every day. I write gratitude, what I'm thankful for, what I'm grateful for every day, because there's something to be grateful for. And I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Casey, that is not it. <laughs> There's one more thing that you do almost every morning, and I think you're doing it right now. What is that? Oh, I do the daily huddle every day if I can, and I exercise every day, move my body too. I do yeah. all those things, and I check myself before I wreck myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering when the daily huddle practice was going to be brought up here because, um, wow, when I come on here. My energy is just, it powers me through the day. It, like in a way it feels like, okay, I'm just, I'm treating myself to this little 30 minutes of enjoyment, but the conversations and the ideas and the strategies that are shared and the laughter and the connection, that is momentum. And that powers me through the day. I think, Kath, there you are. I know you have a washing machine being delivered. I do. And of course it came right now, but that's okay. I'm back. <laughs> Andrea, yes. Yeah, I had a comment also that we need to be um, cautious that momentum is not moving all the time. It's actually the the the, the movement. And I'm thinking about the, the wave going up and down. There's, there's some pause in between. So we cannot think that momentum is all the time you also need to take a step back and take a pause to see where you're going with that momentum. Mm -hmm. So it's not just moving and doing and, and because you get to a point and Tara will know this and, and Catherine, you from your expect experience in emotional connection is you have to pause to really focus. Like you were saying at the beginning, because if you just keep momentum, yeah, you keep moving potentially in the wrong direction. So pause is important also to call out. That is so... Uh so important. I'm so glad that you brought that because mm -hmm. nothing in nature goes one direction up all the time. Nope. And I always love to look the at nature. Ways. Yeah, exactly. And it does. You're right. There is something in the pause, whether that's regrouping, whether it's resting, nobody can sustain that level of momentum. I think that's so important that you bring that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking too. I'm glad you brought that up because um, I also think we, we need to definitely delineate between the difference between energy and momentum. And sometimes we get energy from things like caffeine and sugar. And that's definitely not what we're talking about here because that, while that might give us energy, it at the same time can thwart our creativity and our focus. So that's, thank you. Great contribution. Yeah. Yeah, Tom. All right. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you all. Morning. Hey, question for you. And this is what Andrea just said. I, I just, that's what I was thinking as to, you know, there's some balance needed between knowing where you're going, the objective in mind. But as we also said a few minutes ago, you know, the details matter, build momentum. So Catherine, I've heard you say from time to time, the particles don't matter. You just need to be really clear where you're going. And then with that focus, it'll pull you forward. But, but we are saying, know where you're going but be focused on the details. So I just wanted to get your reaction. Yeah, I think it's more that one, when you get really clear about where you're headed and you've got your practices in place, the particles fall into place. 
So, you know, there are many ways that I could go about, let's say, how, my, keeping this momentum of connection alive, whether I do it, you know, through journaling or calling a friend or by coming onto the daily huddle, as long as I've got my vision and I'm connected to the feeling of it, I don't think the, de the details will fall into place and then they don't quote matter. You know what I mean? But it is important to stay focused on what are the details that get me there or get me to stay there. Do you see the difference? It's a great Yeah, question. I do. Yeah, I think maybe to say it back to you, we don't want to fixate on the details. Right. Uh, but yeah, and yeah. When they fall in place, then yes, see them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A great example of that is what Tara and I talk about when we do events together is we'll get so knee deep in the particles because it's our go-to. And then all of a sudden it'll get really hard and we'll stop and look at each other and go, darn it, we did it again. All we need to do is connect all the particles will fall into place. We will have, we can lean on each other. We can figure out those details, but there, of course there are a few things we do need to take care of. It's not just, you know, go, go for it without any planning, but it's stay connected, stay true to the vision. And then the particles will fall into place. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. That's a great question. So true, Catherine. Um, you said that details are our go-to. And it's kind of funny that you would say that about me because I think I do lean on details because it's actually my weakness. And mm -hmm. I know that about myself. Like I'm very much like idealistic, big vision, always thinking what can be and how things can be better and more beautiful. Um, and so I'm weak on details. So that's when I kind of focus on those. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting close to the hour. And I, 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 it's really, as, as we've talked about, really important that we leave our audience with something, maybe a challenge or a takeaway. And I think everybody has their own takeaway, but let's go back to Saturday before we close out and think about how that momentum was built and how we can keep it alive from here. What would you say would be the one message from Saturday going forward? Yeah, for me, it's really simple part of your gust strategy, which is three steps. It's what is it exactly that I want to keep alive? Map out how I'll do that very simply. For me, it's journaling. And then how am I going to stay connected to people? And how am I going to keep this alive in the forefront of my mind? And then it's three, reflect on it and shift what needs to be shifted to keep that. So circle back. So what's the vision? How am I going to do it? How am I doing? I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. I think I want to take that with us and uh, I'm going to throw it back to you to close us out. Okay, let's do it. Well, um, in the vision of being alive and connected to people, we always start with love because that's what really all connects us. To connect through the heart, give of yourself, give of your time. And honestly, just being of a generous spirit and giving back to people is one thing that will keep you connected more than you can imagine. So laugh out loud, um, always look for those jokes. Just think of Cece and how we can laugh together. That'll help you be more relaxed and to stress less. Eat mostly plants, your body will thank you. It will also help you to sleep better, to be more resourced, which will always help you to move that body. Move what your mama gave you. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you all so much. Such a joy to be with you. Thank you all, keeping that momentum alive. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Awesome job. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.